and a warm welcome. Good morning. It's um, Wednesday the 5th of June 2019. On screen is a talk which is entitled um, Freedom to Think, Freedom to Share an Idea and the Freedom of Speech, in other words, Spoken Words. Subtitle, How Can Live Transcribe Make You Into a Better Writer? I will get um, cracking on exactly what's going on. So a little while ago, Feb, I think, of this year, and an update in May, Google, uh, research at Google, Live Transcribe, which is an app that helps you, uh, hearing impaired, to hear words and things around you and see them on screen immediately. Now, this is not the first time that attention hand has been brought to something like Google Docs voice typing. In other words, taking spoken words into written text. So on the left hand side, I've said people want to know about speaking and seeing their words on screen. I've made a video, a uh, link to it, how to use Google Docs voice typing, and it still has um, views on the board. I think people people want to know about it. So going back to the reason I'm making this, and I'm, I'm looking at the wider angle, in the May 2019 update from Google, um, there was an underlining part here, I think it's still on the website or the, the blog post, I will link to it in the post, is underlined capturing interviews or students taking lecture notes. And I put up here top left, speaking to yourself. In other words, if you want to write something, and I'll demonstrate in the demo in this video, um, how can you get your spoken words on um, sort of in front of you, really, exactly as it says in the graphic below? So a um, couple of ideas. Where may we use live transcribe? Uh, for me, this is what I've written, seeing maybe some thoughts written down and seeing these words on a page in black and white or whatever colours you use might change the way you feel about the idea. I know it does with me. Some things I say out loud is makes perfect sense. You see them written down. You think, what on earth was I thinking? And another uh, second bullet point, YouTube text descriptions. We get tired. Oh, I get tired sometimes after making a video like this that I think I'm published and I want to upload. And then after all of that, I've got to sit there on a keyboard or something and write a load of text description if I wish to. So one example I did use, I don't know, what, a good while ago, you know, I've got 1200 videos on my channel, is previous ways. You can upload spoken text, and I've used the JFK example, onto YouTube, publicly or privately, and you wait for the automatic machine transcript, and it auto-produces these captions. In other words, that's a real-life way we can actually make spoken words written as text. Obviously, you can go down there and sit around and dictate them, but you need a laptop to do that. And I will tell you a couple of the examples that I'm, I'm working on. One is... Of course, if you've got a mobile phone, you open it up, the keyboard pops up, left of screen, and center of screen, there's a microphone, you tap it, and you can speak. That's a Google Docs example. As I will say, and it's starting to really annoy me, quite honestly, as a user, that you've got half of the screen is taken up with a like a QWERTY keyboard or something. And on the right-hand side, similar example, as I've started to be talking about Google Keep, and you know, still half a screen, half a screen. So, getting back down to the actual live transcribe app, what we have here is it works in portrait and it works in landscape in a typical um, mobile phone. Nothing to say there. And then we can go on to see what it looks like actually in action. And this is the interesting part is because um, I'll be talking about data in a couple of seconds. And that is that I went down literally to the riverside um, locally and I started to type just a, a made up story of, you know, this guy called Tom fishing the river and stuff like that. And you'll notice that as I'm talking and there will be a demo in a second that it does start to put in things like wind or dogs barking or laughing or whistling and bits and bobs like that. Remember, if I did want to do this same dictating on the riverbank, you would open it up and you'd get half a screen like that. I'll show you what I mean of what the um, the work is of when it actually gets to to actually uh, sound because remember I've got always a Zoom H2N I could have recorded it on my phone but obviously I was using my phone to use the live transcribe app listen to what the and you can follow a little bit I'm not going to pay too much attention about the accuracy and I've said like roach des minnows just listen um, yeah Tom fished these rivers as a boy he grew up here 
piece of chub, pike, roach, dace, minnows, even the odd gudgeon. Can you hear all that background uh, noise, which is pretty much the wind? And because I've got a, um, a five capsule microphone, I'm just going to play that piece again. But this time I'm going to, shall we say, mute um, the surround sound there. And I'll just play it back and you listen to what's actually coming into my mobile phone, more or less. Tom fished these rivers as a boy. He grew up here. He saw chub, pike, roach, dace, minnows, even the odd gudgeon. We've come down here in the school holidays and it's sent. So all I'm trying to demonstrate there is actually when the phone is listening for certain sounds, it's really got to pick out, you know, quite an amazing piece of technology to get your spoken voice in tons of things, 70 different languages actually written down in the first place. Amazing. So let me step back a little bit here. Um, actually, no, I can't step back because I've got to do the demo. So if you've never seen the app before, uh, it looks a bit like this, and I'm just going to talk over this. So Live Transcribe was, of course, built, and you can read about it for hearing impaired and to visualize words. But if I just play this demo right now, what you'll see is when you open up the app and then start to speak, um, it generates the text. I'm just scrolling back through my app here where you can now save the text and copy it to other places. And I'll show you in a couple of seconds that when I was actually working, it actually uh, recorded about, f I think, a thousand words of mine. I'm just going through. This is the actual uh, me wandering about the place on a walk yesterday in the rain. And let me make that go a bit quicker here. And then it goes right to the end. And then you can see that you can change in the app the different sizes of the text. So you can see it really easily. And then I, mean, I could actually put this video right at the end of this, this video. It doesn't matter. You get the ideas. So then we go back. And we could actually say after the demo thing, stepping back. This chap on screen is William Wordsworth, the famous English writer, and that's his sister, Dorothy. What can we learn from the past? And what I'm talking about, remember, was the absolute freedom to think and share these ideas in the first place. And that's pretty much, I guess, the, the teacher in me. And I'm figuring out who said or thought about these things before. If I go back all the way to like the 1770s, well, not perhaps when Wordsworth was a baby and writing famous poems, but certainly about um, 1807, 1850, what he actually did was he dictated out loud to his sister Dorothy and Dorothy wrote it down. And this is a really nice example I just love. And that is that um, I got, I think, more or less got this from the, the Dove Cottage and the Wordsworth Museum website. I'll put the link in the box. And you can see up here, um, I'm just going to change that a little bit. And you can see that the first line in ink, and remember this was dictated, uh, Dorothy, dictated to Dorothy, the first line is, and I'm just going to bring it back here because I've messed up my slide, which I think was about there. And that was, um, in this fair vale hath many a tree. You can just imagine in the, I think the 1830s, um, William Wordsworth walking about in the Lake District, uh, north of England, and um, saying, Dorothy, get a pen, get a quill, Dorothy, will you? I've got an idea. In this fair vale hath many a tree. Um, and then, of course, is I wandered lonely as a cloud. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, just because we're in 2019, you can actually go back for, you know, nearly 200 years and see how people were speaking things out loud, not necessarily when they are writing them down at the same time. So I went out um, yesterday uh, to see a cow and another cow, which is the same cow, of course. And I stood there in the super noisy, noisy weir of the river. And it was really, really noisy. And what I actually did out on walking around, which I've just, just showed you, is from 2.30 until 3.09, I recorded four sessions, uh, which totaled about 1,014 words. And the amazing thing, where my mouse pointer is, that using Datali here, uh, the live scrolls, transcribed for a thousand spoken words only took about something like 6.1 megabytes which is really really small amazing if you look at the actual app itself performing on the phone because data was going to be a consideration for us all that it's a 30 meg a byte app and the data is 356 kilobytes cache 104 kilobytes so i can only think and i don't know that we're speaking it's whipping up to the cloud okay it's a cloud thing um, with a data connection and then coming back down again but hey if you're on wi-fi 
or with a tiny amount of data like that I hope uh, I think this works on from memory something like lollipop 5.0 onwards or something so it really is made for all so that was my field test and I guess that as we're up to 10 minutes of this video I could go on about it more but I want a conclusion and my conclusion for me personally bear in mind that my objective was to say I want freedom freedom and freedom to create things especially written words can live transcribe make you into a better writer and that is that um, going down on this final slide that in summary and I'm going to read this I would rather speak to a clear grey screen i.e. the one on the left than actually have small text and you can obviously make text bigger in Google Docs or wherever you're doing it uh, but it's annoyingly um, complex as opposed to open it so let me just carry on the statement I would rather speak to a clear grey screen than have small text while having lost half of the screen to a keyboard uh, which I'm not going to use. So what I'm trying to get to is that for me personally spoken words to written text using live transcribe for me at this precise moment in the start of June 2019 are giving me a ton of freedom and I can feel the freedom come along because I'm opening it, I'm seeing a grey screen and off I go. Where on the right, if I open and said, hey, I want to, you know, be careful about this. I want to think about this, you know, and then you open up docs. All I've got is this little button, but it really annoys me um, that I can't get rid of it. You know, I can't just say, hey, I want to do voice typing almost like AKA similar to uh, the desktop experience where, yeah, you've got all this this nonsense going around here. And when I say nonsense, as a teacher, I know and because I've seen children do it. And that is, and I'm, I'm sure adults the same, is I put down here spoken words to written text and on the right hand side, 12 other things. So at the precise moment where you have a thought in your head to write something profound or even a shopping list, um, Am I really worried at that precise moment about bold italics, underlining the color of the text, you know, the justification, the bullet points, the, the stickers, the gifts, the smiley faces, the, you know, really? So my tip, perhaps I'll send it as official feedback, is can't you do a version of Google Docs here on mobile and just, just get rid of it? Make it something like live transcribe. What I will say is one of the slight drawbacks, final point, is that when you um, click and hold or click and tap on whatever it is, tap and hold on mobile, it says select all, but it will only select the stuff that's actually in the frame that you've done. So if I wanted to do select all, knowing there's tons of text that I've showed you before with my story, it will only go this, this, down to format dot. It will only do that session copy, which in many ways you could say, well, arguably, OK, that's fair enough, but hey, this is a new, new, new app that's only been around since Feb this year. So that was everything. And I've got to leave us with the fantastic William and Dorothy Wordsworth. Get a pen. I'm sending feedback to Google.